Now, I'll link this up to another New York Times story over the last few weeks that happened. Some of you might be familiar with a new social media app called Clubhouse. Clubhouse is by invitation only, but everybody is slowly getting an invitation. So most of you will be on Clubhouse ultimately. But Clubhouse is a, a, a um, social media where you can go on, you can, with a bunch of other people, you can create a meeting, you can discuss ideas, discuss anything you want. Other people can join, they can listen, they can raise their hand, they can, you can make them part of the conversation, they can ask a question, you can put them back into the audience. It's only on iPhones, you know, that's a sign of real quality. And um, they will release an app for Android over time, no question. Anyway, it's the hip social media platform of right now. It's the thing, right? And people told us there was no competition to Twitter and Facebook and all these things. It, it, this is hotter than anything right now. Um, and... One second. Anyway, there are tech writers for the New York Times who, are, who cover Silicon Valley, who cover tech. And one of these writers... Um, one of these writers has been trying to get an interview with Mark Andreessen. Now, Mark is not giving interviews, and he won't be interviewed by her. He just won't. He doesn't like her. He doesn't think she's objective. Whatever the reason, he won't give the interview to New York Times tech writer. But Mark goes on Clubhouse, joins in with uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk is on Clubhouse quite frequently. Lex Friedman is on Clubhouse. Um, somebody says he's, uh, Lex Friedman is on Clubhouse 12 hours a day. Yeah, if you only do this, if I only, this was my only profession, I'd have to be on Clubhouse now constantly. I don't find the time to get on Clubhouse. Between preparing for this, doing all my shows, uh, doing, you know, I, I don't interview, so I actually have to come up with content. And then, um, and then, you know, working the hedge fund. Who has time? And, and I have a life. I have, I have a wife. I have a life. Um, who has time to be in Clubhouse all day? All day? Eric Weinstein. Eric Weinstein is on Clubhouse constantly. I see him. You know, it pops up every time he's on. Anyway, Mark Andreessen goes in Clubhouse and basically gives an interview on Clubhouse. The New York Times reporter is pissed off because she can't get, and she's important. After all, it's the New York Times. Why is Mark Andreessen doing this ad hoc interview on Clubhouse and he won't give the New York Times an interview? That's disrespectful. That's wrong. So first, she slams Clubhouse for doing this. But then she gets on one of these Clubhouse meetings with Mark Andreessen. And then at the end of it, she tweets that Mark Andreessen said the R word. The R word, do you know that there's an R word that you're not allowed to say? I didn't know this. But now I have to say the R word because I'm not allowed to say it because it's the word that the New York Times says you're not allowed to say. So, what is the R word? Anyone know what the R word is? No, you can say re re racism. You can say reality. You can say reason. You can say all those words. There's an R word, ranch. You can say ranch. You can say Ronald Reagan. You can say Republican. What you can't say is retarded. You're not allowed to say retarded. Now, First, so she accused Mark Andreessen of saying the word retarded. Now, first, clubhouse people are talking. It's hard to tell at any given point who's talking. It turned out it wasn't Mark Andreessen who said the word retarded. This was just a way for them, for her, him, her, I, I think it's a, it's a she, to go after Mark Andreessen. So somebody else said the word retarded. But 
Retarded wasn't referring to any person. The per reason it was used was to refer to a group, I think, on Reddit that calls themselves retarded. So in order to refer to the people who call themselves retarded, the person said, not Mark Andreessen, whoever it was, the people who call themselves retarded, and this was now used as a smear against a smear against um, Mark Andreessen, which is a straight out lie. Was the reporter, you know, was anything done to the reporter by the New York Times? Were they criticized in any way? Did the New York Times fire them? Did they, you know, this, this was lying and complaining and, you know, talk about this attitude of, I deserve, I demand, I'm a New York Times reporter, therefore everybody should do what I want. No, New York Times did nothing. She's still around. She's still thriving. But who was fired at the New York Times? I'm sorry today's uh, full on New York Times uh, complaining. Who was fired from the New York Times? Well, one of the most well-regarded journalists, uh, science journalist at the New York Times was fired. And... New York Times still does some decent science journalism. But I think last week or the week before, I can't keep tra track of time anymore, one of the most well-regarded science journalists was fired from the New York Times. Now, why was he fired? Now, one of the things that um, rich parents do for their kids is they send them on these, they, they pay a lot of money to send them on these science tours, uh, science camps, and, and uh, this uh, journalist uh, from the New York Times was, was part of a, a science camp, I think, that went to Peru with, these, with a bunch of, uh, you, you know, uh, kids from wealthy families, New York families, that were trying to get something good on the resume so they could get into college. And uh, there was a, a conversation that was happening between him and these 16, 17-year-olds. And some of the 16, 17-year-olds within the group uh, were complaining about a, one of the girls in the group who, when she was 12, so a few years earlier, had put out a video or a tweet, something, using the N-word. Now, there's a word you really can't say. The N-word. And, and I'm all for not saying the N-word. The N-word is a, a really bad word. It's disrespectful. It's, it harkens back to a, a really ugly period in American history. There's no reason to say the N-word. But anyway... They were complaining about she did this video and, and when she was 12, when she was 12. And that she needed to apologize or how could they even relate to her? How could they have, you know, and, and this was, she'd never said it again. She, you know, nothing, you know. And he was trying to inquire from them as they were having this conversation why she was using the word. In what context was she using it? Was she... Did they think she was a racist? Did they think it was just disrespect? What was they doing? And in the conversation about the use of the N-word, he actually said it. Not in a dismissive way. He said, well, why did she say the word? Right? What was the context of saying the word? Right? That's it. In conversation. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago, somebody on Twitter revealed this, probably one of those students from back then. The New York Times initially said, oh, no big deal. I mean, he didn't use the word as a slur. He didn't use the word. It was in conversation. It was in context. Then there was an uproar among the staff at the New York Times. This cannot be tolerated. This man cannot be. This behavior cannot be tolerated. And they fired him. Long time science reporter, New York Times, fired because in some conversation with some students, 
about a related topic, he said the N-word. Buy it. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to take anything the New York Times now does. Seriously. It, it's been true for many years. But this is absurd and crazy and nutty and, and just nuts. Insane. Barry Weiss had a tweet thread, I think, that describes much of what's going on at the New York Times really well. Barry Weiss, as I think some of you know, worked for the New York Times for, for, for a few years and was basically left fired from the New York Times uh, a few months ago because she said it was unpleasant to work there because th people were harassing her and, and, and because of her views. Again, Barry Weiss is a... I don't know, maybe slightly right of center, very pro-Israel, which is a very big sin at the New York Times. And this is what she writes. I think this is quite interesting. Barry Weiss says, the, the, the civil war inside the New York Times between the mostly young wokes, the mostly 40-plus liberals, is the same one raging inside other publications and companies across the country. The dynamic is always the same. The old God lives by a set of principles we can broadly call civil libertarians, civil libertarianism. They assumed they shared that worldview with young people that they hired who called themselves liberals and progressives. But it was an incorrect assumption. By the way, Barry Weiss has a substack. The new God has a different worldview, one articulated best by Jonathan Haidt and Greg Lukianoff. It, you know, they've done a number of articles on this that are excellent. They call it safety. Safetyism, in which the right of people to feel emotionally and psychologically safe trumps what were previously considered core liberal values like free speech. Perhaps the cleanest example of this dynamic was in 2018, so this has been going on for a long time, when David Remnick, under tremendous public pressure from his staffers, disinvited Steve Bannon from appearing on stage at the New York Ideas Festival. But there are dozens and dozens of examples. I've been mocked by many people over the past few years for writing about the campus culture wars. They told me it was a sideshow. But this, and this is crucial, but this was always why it mattered. The people who graduated from those campuses would rise to power inside key institutions and transform them. I'm in no way surprised by what has now exploded into public view. In a way, it's oddly comforting. I feel less alone and less crazy trying to explain the dynamic to people. What I am shocked by is the speed. I thought it would take a few years, not a few weeks. Here's one way to think of what's at stake. The New York Times motto is all the news that's fit to print. One group emphasizes the word all, the other the word fit. Right. Now, Barry Weiss wrote this after she resigned from the New York Times. This, this was written in June. But I think that is where we are today, with the New York Times being dominated by young staff, not by its leadership, by their young staff who cannot tolerate to hear, to listen, to engage with any ideas that might upset them, any words that might upset them, even if the words are spoken in a completely innocuous context. The words, the ideas, their emotions, their emotions are primary. Nothing else matters. So, the New York Times now is, is run by the mob. It's run by young social justice warriors, guided by emotion, guided by fear, guided by safetyism, which is not the best way to explain it. I think it's more emotionalism. It is driving out all the better people who have ever worked there, Barry Weiss included. And again, I don't agree with Barry Weiss. She doesn't agree with me. She probably thinks 
Ayn Rand is terrible. I don't know what she thinks of Ayn Rand. But the point is that Barry Weiss is one of the better people in the world in which we find ourselves, left or right. And that senior leadership in the New York Times, through the dynamic that Ayn Rand explained over and over and over again, the senior leadership of the New York Times cannot stand up to them because the senior leadership of the New York Times has given up the moral high ground to critical race theory, postmodernism, and the emotionalism, the emotionalism of the mob. So what can they argue against? Ultimately, they know that these young people are product of the ideas that the left has been preaching for decades. The young people are product of the ideas that the left has emboldened for decades. While they don't hold them, they see that this was the inevitable consequence of what they do hold. A lack of respect for objective reality, a lack of respect for reason of ideology, and a lack of respect for individualism, and freedom, selectivity about what freedom they like and what freedom they don't like. And what you're seeing today is the new left, the new new left, the emotionalist left. That's what I'll, we should call them. The, I mean, they were all, always emotionalist. I mean, Ayn Rand, remember Ayn Rand's great essay, Apollo versus Dionysus, one of the best essays she wrote. This is a great, great essay. You should all read Apollo versus Dionysus by Ayn Rand. She wrote this, uh, Apollo represented by the moon landing, by, by Apollo 11. And, and uh, Dionysus is represented by Woodstock. Dionysus is about emotion. Apollo is about reason. That is the conflict. Ayn Rand saw this in 1969, I think, when she wrote this. Was it eight or nine? Anyway. Emotions as the key, as the root, as the cause of the left. Emotions as an excuse for not thinking, as an excuse for not valuing, as an excuse for nihilism. And while those emotions by the hippies in Woodstock were reined in, if you will, during the 70s, primarily in the 80s and 90s, Woodstock was 69, so this was, essay was in 69. Return of the Primitive. Many of those hippies, Woodstock, emotionalists, became university professors and launched the, ide the ideas that have fueled the left in academia for the last 50 years. And the chickens are coming home to roost. The students of that 60s generation who are taking it seriously now, who have taken their ideas to their ultimate conclusion, to their ultimate disintegration, to their ultimate nihilism, they are now leaving universities and gaining significant, they're leaving Ivy League universities and gaining significant positions in the culture at the New York Times and many other publications and corporations. Right. Uh, Brian says, today Coca-Cola made a statement committing to critical race theory training within their company. I take a cynical approach and think they're intentionally dividing and demoralizing their workforce. Your thoughts? Well, I think, no, I think this is the same people as at the New York Times, young ambitious, passionate, idealistic, if you could call it idealistic, you know, it's not really, there's not, no ideal there. Um, people at Coca-Cola, and, and those people, they don't go into manufacturing. They don't go, they're not yet old enough to be senior managers. So where are they? Where do these people get jobs? Where do they hire them in Ivy League schools? Where does Coca-Cola put those Ivy League graduates? 
in human resources. And human resources in every big corporation is always the center, the hub of crazy leftist ideas. And therefore, I wouldn't be surprised if this has come from the bottom, the, new, the Coca-Cola management is going, yeah, okay, what the hell? That, that's okay. You know, go for it. What do we know? We don't understand this stuff. We're actually in this to make money and to produce a product. But human resources, they're in charge of training and let them do what they want. Hey, and they went to Yale and Harvard. They must be right. And they have them all high ground. They're passionate. They're young. They're excited. And they understand what the world needs. They understand what a new workforce requires. So let them do it. They don't know. The CEO of Coca-Cola doesn't know what critical race theory means. I'd bet you anything. So it really is this abandonment by the older generation that stands for nothing, right? What are older liberals and older conservatives? Neither here nor there. They have no clear unequivocal view of the world, not one they can defend, not the one they'll stand by, not one they'll fight for. We've seen that for, for years, decades. And when a, a young group comes along with what seems like a coherent set of ideas, they're not coherent, they're complete mumbo jumbo, and is willing to fight for those ideas, and is out to destroy they're going to have the upper hand because they, they are the more intellectual. They are the ones that come from schools. They are the ones that understand. They are the ones that know. And the American businessmen are just letting them in. Yes, do all the training in our business. Please, do it all. And you see it over and over and over again. And that's how this country is going to sink. And you see it at Facebook, at Twitter, it's not even that Zuckerberg is this radical leftist. No, it's people, it's his young staff that are far more radical, far more leftist than he is. You see the same thing at other tech companies. It's the young people coming in who are bringing in this cancel, cancel culture is not the right terminology, but this Culture that limits people's ability and willingness to think. Limits it, constrains it. And this is where we are today. Tragedy. It, it's, it's just, you know, tragic to see the United States of America heading in this kind of direction. But this is, the, we are allowing the left to set the terms. And the way we want to combat them is with a Donald Trump. You can't combat emotionalism with emotionalism. You can't combat irrationality of the left with irrationality of the right. Collectivism of the left with collectivism of the right. Nihilism of the left with nihilism of the right. The only way to combat the woke mob, the only way to combat critical race theory, uh, you know, postmodernism, and the, the rest of the ugly, ugly phenomena, intellectual phenomena on the, on the left, the only way to combat it is with a set of ideas that is rational, reality-oriented, elevates the individual above the tribe, above the group, above the collective that views and understands what individual rights mean, what freedom of speech means, what property rights mean. You don't deal with populism with populism, irrationality with irrationality, emotionalism with emotionalism. None of that will ever work. It's not fighting. It's not fighting. There's no fight. When you have nothing to say, nothing to fight for, just to fight against. Being ugly doesn't mean you're fighting. Attacking your enemy doesn't mean you're fighting. 
not if the attacks are useless. And by the way, by the way, lose you the House, the Senate, and the presidency. So, so much for that fighting. Didn't work very well. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes but uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs> 